Oh yeah, my name's Stu Brudry, um, I'm an MIA based on the North Cornwall coast and specialise mainly in sea cliff climbing. Um, sea cliff climbing really has been my passion within climbing for, I've been climbing for about 30 years now, but within within climbing probably for about 20 years I guess. Okay, so uh, let's define what we're talking about when we, when we say um, rock quality. So we're not just talking about the fact that it might be loose. Um, there's lots of things that affect sea cliffs, mainly the swell from the sea, so you get the sea washing up, which obviously makes it slimy, so you lose the friction. So the quality of the climb is going to be different then. You get lots of lichen, lots of plant growth and things like that, which obviously makes a difference, gets behind the rock and causes, uh, lifts them out and that kind of thing. Uh, and then we get loose flags. And, and loose rock that we can pull off. I mean, you can hear that just by tapping. You know, it makes a big difference. If you were to put a camming device behind there and then take a fall, the chances are that's just gonna rip out. So, you know, as you're climbing, you can actually sort of be tapping things and just sort of feeling around. And then if you look a little bit further over, you can see this, although that's not loose, they're not bedded very well. So if you're really pulling hard on that, you know, and you're putting all your effort in and it pops out, so you've got to think about what you're pulling on, where your feet are going, and then you've got to think about backing yourself up by putting, putting gear in. So just making sure that the rock that you're actually using is solid. This yeah, it's a bit litchiness on here, isn't it? Yes, it's just as well. It's not damp, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of moisture will make it entertaining. <clears throat> yeah, like I say, if you come across and you lose all that, I'll just try and skirt round it. I'll certainly give you some notice. Okay. okay. I'm going to tie in here with a little bit of slack so I can move around a little bit. Okay, I've got a screw Okay, having just got down off, uh, off climbing that route, the a few things to sort of pick up on really. Um, generally it was pretty solid. This kind of rock is a pillar lava and it, it sits above the sea and it's not really bedded in very well so you're never quite sure what's actually solid and what's not. Most of it seems to be solid but then you get the odd bits and pieces and you're not really quite sure. So generally I think the key is sort of weight transference so rather than just pulling holds hard, you know, you're at the wall or you're, you're bouldering, you know, you're hauling down and actually to be really strong is probably a handicap in a way because you can't actually pull that hard, you know, you want to sort of move your weight around and you probably noticed probably from the film there a lot of what I was doing was bridging and actually palming so you can actually gain your height from palming. But if you do, you know, if you are on a route and you come across sections of loose, you know, which I'm sure you will do at some point, sometimes if, if big holes are loose, it's easier to work around them and maybe use smaller holes. And just take your time over it, just look what you're doing and just sort of, just sort of take it steady. And uh, as I say, just make sure you get the gear in just to protect it really.
about when you're approaching the top, having sort of talked about loose rock and things, you tend to find on sea cliffs you're not always arriving at a flat edge or a, a nice sort of solid area. Quite often it might be grassy, or again there might be a bit of loose rock on it. So, you know, it's going to take you a while to actually go back and set your belay up. You know, sometimes that might take as long as the climb, trying to find something that's really solid. You might have to go a fair way back to actually get a good solid belay. So, you know, I have seen people get to the top on, you know, flat grit stone edges and just shout that they're safe. Well, actually, in a sea cliff environment, you're not really safe until you're clipped in. So just go back, spend your time, make sure you get a good solid equalised anchors. And get yourself into a position where you can see your second coming up, if you can. And you can sort of perhaps foresee things before they happen. So just make sure, before you shout safe, that you're actually clovitched in and that you are safe. We're here on the sea cliffs of North Cornwall um, discussing and looking at issues thrown up by loose rock or um, poor rock quality. And we've moved up a little way from the Pentire Point where we've got a different kind of rock to what is called the Culm Coast which is near Bude. Um, the issues that are thrown up here is really the fact that it's a sedimentary rock and it varies in varying degrees from a sandstone to a, a slate shale mix. So the sandstone being a little bit more snappy and it throws up a couple of issues really. The first one being how to handle the rock itself, you know, how to use the holes and uh, you know, how to feel your way around the climbing on that. And the second is to how to protect it because you tend to find that the nature of the rock is a little bit more snappy so not quite so reliable and the placements tend to be smaller uh, and not quite so deep. Okay, the first thing I want to look at really is, is the holds and how to use them. Um, when the rock is of poorer quality and you're not, you're not really quite sure of what you're pulling on, and you tend to find that there's sort of lots of sort of overlapping small edges. And you know, if you put if you if you're pulling out on them, you can see this one's just crumbling away. Well, obviously from below, you know, you can't see that. So. You need to sort of take it nice and steady, look where your foot holds are, just get yourself in balance over your feet. Most of the climbing tends to be on this coast, it tends to be slab climbing. So you know, you can be working with your feet most of the time. But what you've got to be careful of is what you're actually pulling on. For me, when I'm climbing on this, what I tend to say to people, you know, in jest, but actually it, it, it works very well, is instead of actually getting something and pulling out on it, what you're doing is you're actually coming below it and you're pulling down, and at the same time you're pushing it in, and then that way, you know, if you have got poor quality rock, you've got more chance of it actually staying bedded in to where it is. Um, and this is the bottom end of a sea cliff, and you can actually see that the friction's pretty well being worn off by the waves, so there's not actually any friction to it at all. The placements are quite small, they're also quite flared, so the small cam placements. The issue here, which I'd like to pick up on, and these are small cams, so they're, you know, they're not as strong anyway. Um, it's a really good placement, and actually, you know, if you saw that, you'd think, you know, that's lovely, it's right in, nice and deep. But when you fall on it, it's just going to pull straight back out, and it's as good as it's going to get. But actually, there's no friction, it's just like marble. So, you clip something like that and think it was great, and you're going to have a bit of a shock when, uh, when you take a fall on it, because it's just going to rip. Okay, so if you're climbing on um, places like the Culm Coast, or the Atlantic Coast, uh, you're limiting the amount of protection possibilities that you are going to have to play with, really, if you haven't got small wires. So these little brass nuts, are, are pretty, I'd say they're pretty essential, really, on the Corn Coast climbing. Um, they tend to be shallow placements, you want to get them in as deeply as possible. Equally, sometimes the smaller wires might fit that little bit better, because then they sit right into the back, so you've actually got a little bit more to play with them. So we're looking at a good, good nut placement there. Um, very smooth on both sides. Again, the quality of the rock has been sort of worn away by the sea. So you tend to find that there's not quite so much friction. So you've got two options really. Sometimes you can put a really good, it's a really good nut, work out which way it's gonna sink the best. 
The difference is, is because you have actually got this lack of friction, this smoothness on the outside. So actually, you know, they can actually lift. So sometimes if you can get something a little bit smaller maybe, into the back of the crack, it actually sits much deeper. But you want something that's good, full weight. It's going to stay in and get it nice and seated. You've got to appreciate the fact that every time you go climbing, you're putting yourself in a potentially dangerous situation. So what you're doing and what you need to do for yourself is you need to learn the skills to offset those dangers. And if you can do that, you can go out and you can climb for yourself in pretty well any environment and be as safe as you can. So all I'd like to say to you guys really is, don't avoid sea cliffs, they are fantastic places to be. So come down, get on it, stay safe and enjoy your climbing.